Okay, so if we did that, you know, we would be we would negative negatively cash flow if we're making a payment on that right away. If we were going to be able to do it for the first year, you know, if we structured it kind of like this other deal that we did where we didn't make any payments to you for like the first 12 months and then maybe half payments for six months or another 12 months or something like that. So would that even be feasible for you? All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Seller Calls with Chris Deal. I'm your host, Chris Deal with Real Estate Investing Made Easy. And on this call, we're actually going to be calling a seller. This is going to be our second call with him. His job was to think about the terms that he was looking for and come up with some, some numbers as far as down payment, monthly payment, things like that. Super reasonable guy. And so I think there is definitely a world in which we could possibly make something work and cash flow a decent bit here. So let's hop on this call, see what happens, and we'll go from there. All right, Brad. Hey, what's up, Brad? This is Chris. How are you? Good, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Last time we talked, you know, we were kind of discussing some different options about some, some term options and have you had a chance to kind of think through that and come up with anything or i've got i'm lucky rich thrown into our plan okay so the hoa i have found out they have a new board to, they banded together and they're trying to implement covenants and restriction to not allow rental in the community people like myself who are currently on uh, on title that have had them are grandfathered in but I get the caveat there is once that title is changed to ten, they'll no longer be allowed. Oh, interesting. Have they already implemented and voted on those rules, or is it something they're in the discussions about? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. Um, I, I got notice of it through some uh, other people in the neighborhood, and you trying to confirm them when that goes into a fat, really more or less. But I, I need to contact the HOA. A lot of club enabled pretty that's the day. Probably a week I'm hoping to get in touch with them and see what the actual be built on that from the hort now. Gotcha. Okay. God, I hate HOAs. They're such a freaking. I know, right? Why? Well, it's, it's actually more the people who got the HOAs are doing it on behalf of the board. It, it's a bunch of crusty old people, forgive me for, for making fun of them, but they have this narrative in their head that your property values here are going to go down because there's a couple of rentals in the neighborhood and it's gonna bring dumb in. Well, that's not the case because people can't afford to rent it anyway. The go a 30 group of individuals are gonna be able to afford to live there anyhow, so. Yeah. It, for real estate age is getting in their ears what it is. Gotcha, okay. Do you know anything whether they're focused on all rentals or just short-term rentals? all rentable. Wow. I'm even having to provide proof that I have a rental contract with Clay. Interesting. Now, I don't know, I mean, from a legal standpoint, I'm not an attorney, but it, it, it feels to me like, well, you know, my contract or whatever my terms are regarded by the contract or not, that's my own visit as the homeowner. Proceed whatever, you know, what their CCNRs are. Um, so I don't, I don't know, but gotcha. Well, that's yeah, that's definitely a wrinkle in the uh, in the the situation. You know, let's set that aside, right? Let's just assume that you know whatever whatever happens there. Let's just assume that we will be able to move forward with something from a rental standpoint, right? And just you know uh, look at because at the end of the day, right? Like if there's a workaround to it that you know and our numbers aren't even in a, in alignment then it doesn't really matter one way or another but if our numbers are in alignment then we can kind of think through some different strategies and i already have some ideas of some things that that we've done in different scenarios to kind of like hide the fact that you know there's a new owner so to speak there's some creative ways you can do it you know it's there's more hoops to jump through. So, you know, it kind of has to make sense. But like, so when you're taking over somebody's mortgage, right? The the mortgage company, like all loans for the most part, except for VA loans. And I forget, is yours, your, your mortgage is not a VA loan, is it? No, it is a VA, yeah. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yours does not have a due on sale clause, right? Like they, the VA will actually do, you know, it's assumable, you can, 
you can do an exact subject to. But like most others will have like a do on sale clause. And so there's a couple different ways to like solve that problem if it comes up. One of them is, you know, you deed the title back, you put it into like a trust with the trust being the name of the current owner. And then you sell the trust or transfer the trust ownership. So that way it's in the, tr the trust name is, you know, John Smith. And that's who the mortgage name is, is in John Smith. So they're like not really any wiser. And they just think, oh, obviously, only John Smith is going to have the trust of John Smith set up. You know what I mean? So it's just like little, little nuances. And I would imagine, you know, and I, I would have to talk to our legal team and see, but I would imagine, you know, if we had to, we could probably do something similar with structuring it that way, if it, if it made sense. It sounds like they haven't even like fully implemented this rule yet. Does that sound about right? Well, that's what I don't know. And I'm trying to... Um, I know the having a, a boat and me on it or meeting your boat on it equal last week. I didn't have exact B. I don't know what the outcome would be. But I need to understand what it. But well, yeah, let's we'll, we'll cross that bridge. You know, once once we get there. As far as like the numbers that you were kind of thinking, or I don't know if that you know had you kind of like come full stop and halt on you know coming up with your numbers did you kind of already come up with numbers at that point or did you that kind of like for me the arrow would change much from what we talked about in my mind i think we talked about like all of the around 20k locked thumb and then like like a 200 hour month payment i think it was i think you're pretty spot on because your existing mortgage your balance on that is what like 174 or something like that probably close to 174 just under i imagine got it okay all right and that was at like 2.7%, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, all right, cool. What's your total monthly PITI as of right now? Wiley, it's like a thousand and two dollars, thousand and three, I think. And you factor in the mortgage payment plus the HOA payment. Oh, that includes the HOA? That's correct, yeah. Got it. Okay, all right, perfect. All right, so I got that factored in. Let's see here. We were factoring in about 10% for property management. We were going down from 15 to 10% on the maintenance and vacancy. Okay, so then that puts us right there. And then what do you have it rented for right now? Remind me again, 1550. And then you think that could raise by about, you know, 50 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah, $1,500 maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's real big market wide. Okay. All right. So right now, if we... See, if we took over your existing mortgage payment and then let's see here. So we're looking at existing mortgage payment and then 20k down and then that only leaves you with about what like 20 25k of equity that we would be financing right does that sound about right yeah they could give you around 450 and can in equity total that's the bar. got it okay okay so you're looking for roughly about half your half your equity up front and then finance the rest okay so if we did that you know we would be we would negative negatively cash flow if we're making a payment on that right away if we were going to be able to do it for the first year, you know, if we structured it kind of like this other deal that we did where we didn't make any payments to you for like the first, you know, 12 months, then we would be able to positively cash flow a little bit. If I'm bringing a lender to the table for that 20 grand plus closing costs and everything, you know, then I'd probably be able to cash flow around like, 50 bucks or so between now and when the lease is up, which is obviously not super exciting, but you know, the goal is, you know, if I can raise the rents, you know, a hundred bucks and then in 12 months, then I start making like half payments to you and then raise the rents again and then go to full payments and then just ride out that, that payment structure. So I think that was the one thing that you were crunching numbers on. I think your monthly payment was like kind of, you know, solid, but it was whether you could, you know, sustain, you know, not taking any payments for 12 months and then maybe half payments for six months or another 12 months or something like that. So would that even be feasible for you? 
I mean, yeah, I think it could be because I've been thinking about it a little bit. I mean, that initial 20K, I can use throwing something to cash flow and make up the difference. It's the matter of everybody the right spot. So, I mean, I think it could. Yeah, I'm not concerned about it because I was initially thinking about it. What what kind of thing would you think about putting that 20K into? Um, I got some dividend stock um, that I've already invested in. They're giving me a nice return, but like probably, especially now since they're down, um, I probably grow it in that. And that would more cover the difference. What kind of rate of return are you seeing on that right now? Right now, it is paying me on 105% for share. That's a world that I'm not like super knowledgeable about, about so uh, forgive the dumb questions. So, so is that basically you put a dollar in, you're getting a dollar, you know, 105 out? Yeah. Well, true well. well Oh, okay. So you're like double. Yeah. So, okay. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. So for every hundred dollars you put in, you're getting 205 out. So you're, yeah. So you're doubling the money. Okay. That's good. Is that over? What's that timeline over? Is that over a 12 month period? Uh, it phase out poorly. Um, and it, it's a cyclical industry, but I know I'm kind of, I'm, I'm close to following, you know, what their earnings are or what their, their payout is going to be. If they're both. I'm riding that wave and I'm throwing everything I have at it right now and been riding out of the sheer pride to like low it'll be ever been to like it and dive not to buy. Yeah, sounds like it. What what's the share prices right now? Um we're around forty two dollars a share. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Can't think of many other places you'll be able to, you know, double your money in, in a year's worth of time. So is it doubling quarterly or doubling yearly? It, it varied. They thought their earnings from quarter. Oh, okay. like for example, last last quarter, their earnings they paid out forty percent of their earnings to shareholders and dividends, and that earned four point seven five, or four dollars seventy five cents per share. Got it. This coming quarter, they haven't relieved their earnings just yet. So is that like a that's like a thirty percent per share, right? Yeah, it it like ridiculous. Yeah, kind of like if the gold vein right here, everybody go pick it up while. Got it. What what industry is that? Uh, it be shipping. Okay. God. Yeah, I could imagine with all the issues through COVID and everything. So I guess if, if that works for you, then really the the hurdle is just going to be this this rental situation. Yeah. So I guess what will be the next steps for you to track down and figure out exactly what the rules and and regulations are based on this this new vote. I just got getting in touch with them next week to find out the actual retails of it. Have them send me over um, a copy of the the most up to date regulations and also when that goes. Perfect. Yeah, I'll talk to a couple people I know and see what their thoughts are. I'm wondering if it if it would be advantageous for us to to like you know if it hasn't gone into effect and let's say it's going to go into effect you know like next Friday. I'm wondering if it makes sense for us to be in contract to purchase the property prior to then, you know, with it stipulated in there, like specifying that, you know, purchasing for for the purpose of of maintaining as a rental, as a long term rental. And then that way, maybe technically, legally, we're grandfathered in because if they try to like if they basically put a halt to us being able to rent it out then they're actually infringing on on your ability to enter into a, a legally binding contract and they're forcing you into breach of contract you know what i mean so i'll talk to a couple people i'll see what their thoughts are on that and yeah see what you come up with but just so just so we're on the same page so if if we can come in we take over the payments on on the va loan you know we take title we, you know, come up with 20K down and then, you know, the remaining 25K, we, you know, we sell our finance at, you know, like a two, you know, a $200 a month payment, um, but we would just do no payments for the first 12 months and then half payments after 12 months and then full payments after, like, are you cool with, with 24 months for the, for going up to full payments or would you want 18? I mean, it'd be better for us if we can push it out to 24, but you let me know. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a bullet to it. It makes me really different. So I'm still getting bigger. Or a little for you. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, let me talk to, to my team, see what we can come up with. And uh, if there's any particular issues there, 
you know, I'll have my underwriters just kind of re-underwrite the, the deal based on those terms and everything. If they come back and they're like, they're like, hey, just based on the numbers, we're, you know, we're gonna be too, even at that, we're gonna be too tight on the, the positive cash flow, you know, because we're gonna have to get an investor for the, the down money. I mean, how, how hung up are you on 20 down? You know, if they're like, oh, it's gotta be a little less than that. Like, no, but personally, that would probably be a, a deal breaker for me unless we restart to the monthly payments just because of what I talked about with, with William Beth and that money and trying to capitalize on it. Okay, that makes sense. All right, well, let me, uh, let me talk to them and see what we can come up with. Yeah, let me know what you come up with on your side with regards to the HOA. And then I'll talk to some people around here, see what their thoughts are. And, you know, maybe, you know, like I said, maybe we just get into an agreement where, you know, it would have their their implementation would put you in breach of contract, which would mean that they couldn't legally do that because then you could sue the hell out of them. So um, which they're not they're not going to want that. So <laughs> what other questions do you have for me at this point? Uh, I don't think I have any additional questions, questions tricked out, Kurt. I think um, you can really get, you have to really get about kind of keeping a loop on what you're, you're so for being out without a bullet. You understand everything, all right? Awesome. All right, cool. So I guess the only other thing is if you could get me like a, a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, um, and then that way we can, you know, just take a look at that, make sure we have all the numbers in there exactly. And then uh, we'll do our side of the underwriting, just make sure everything, you know, pencils out real good. And then as soon as you touch base with somebody from the HOA and you get an update on on where they're at with that process, if they've already put it into effect, then we might be kind of stuck. But if if it hasn't gone into effect yet, then then we might have some flexibility there. If it's already gone into effect, find out what the date was. Yeah, that was good. I'm, I'm happy to be there, man. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting with you and working with you so far. And, you know, I look forward to, to continuing this relationship and seeing how, you know, seeing where this all plays out. Um, I'll let you know if I come across anything in the meantime. But, yeah, just shoot me over a text with that mortgage statement and then I'll get working on my side. And then just let me know as soon as you touch gloves with them. Sounds great. Awesome, man. Appreciate you, Brad. Have a good rest of your weekend. Like our Chris. Take care. All right. God bless. Talk to you later. Boom. All right, guys. So... So this guy, you know, military guy has a rental, you know, we're looking to pick it up as a cash flowing asset. When we structured all the details, he's got a VA loan, really low interest rate. So we want to take that over and he's got about $40,000, $45,000 worth of equity. So we're going to do a down payment to him. And then the remaining, we're going to sell our finance at 0%, 0%. And we're going to make those payments over time. And we're going to do a $200 a month payment. And the great thing is because we wouldn't be able to cash flow right out of the gate, we basically set up a graduated payment structure and he already agreed. He said an extra six months would not be a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do zero payments for the first 12 months, and then we're gonna do half payments for the next 12 months, and then full payments from month 25 on for the remainder of the term for that $25,000 of equity. So this is how you get super creative with your structure. It's a hybrid transaction. Now we can basically take that as a rental, but even if we can't take it as a rental, guys, we can sell this on a wrap to an end buyer and we can cash flow 350 bucks a month. And that might be the way that we go. So we'll keep you guys in the loop. Stay tuned, follow this transaction. And if you like this, you like this deal structure, you wanna learn more about these types of creative structures, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like, put the comment section, you know, fill out the comments below. And if you need somebody to hop on and close your seller calls, you know, send us a message. I'll be happy to schedule some time to jump on some of your seller calls and see if we can close them up. Obviously they gotta be vetted and, and qualified first, but, um, but yeah, I'd be happy to do that and we'll structure something. Now, the last thing is that wrinkle, right? Like if the HOA is passing a law where you can't rent out your house, which is absolutely ridiculous. Like this is America, like you should be able to, to do whatever you want with your property. HOAs are a freaking nightmare. But if that is something that we can't do, then again, we can wrap it to an end buyer, come up with some other sort of structure, if he's already in contract for the sale of his property to somebody that's buying it for the purpose of a rental, legally, he can't back out of the contract. And so 
technically the HOA would be putting him in a position to be in breach of contract because he was selling to us as a cash flowing rental. And so that that would put him in an objectionable position, which would ergo put them in an objectionable position because now they're forcing his breach of contract, which he would be liable for. And so he would probably, I'm not an attorney, uh, but we're going to consult a real estate attorney. He would probably be able to sue the HOA uh, for that fact. And Lord knows that they're not going to want that. So we'll keep you up to date on this particular one. But thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. And this is how we make real estate investing easy.